Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. In this video, we would be talking about dependency injection. Dependency injection is one of the core features of the Spring Framework. Understanding dependency injection would help you to understand Spring Framework very, very easily. The thing is, dependency injection is not something which is introduced by Spring Framework. Dependency inversion principle is one of the core principles when you are developing object-oriented software. Whenever we develop object-oriented programs, you need to follow something called solid principles. If you'd want to learn more about the solid principles, I would recommend you to check out the link in the description which would help you to understand them much better. In the solid principles, S stands for single responsibility principle, O for open closed principle, L for Liskow substitution principle, I for interface segregation principle, and the D there stands for something called dependency inversion. What is dependency inversion? It's nothing but the concept which enables dependency injection. So let's look at what is dependency inversion and let's look at what is dependency injection in this specific video. Let's look at an example of tight coupling. To-do business service is directly creating an instance of the to-do data service IMPL in here. The complex algorithm IMPL is creating an instance of the bubble sort algorithm in here. This complex algorithm IMPL is doing a lot of complex logic. You give it some data, it does a lot of complex logic and part of the logic is to sort the data. So among 100 things that it does, one of the things is to be able to sort the data. What it's doing in here, the complex algorithm IMPL is directly creating an instance of the bubble sort algorithm. So it's directly creating a bubble sort algorithm instance and using the bubble sort algorithm to sort the data. That is what is called tight coupling. Why am I calling it tight coupling? Why is it tight? Imagine what I would need to do if I would need to change from bubble sort to quick sort. What do I need to change? I need to change the code inside the complex algorithm IMPL. So the complex algorithm IMPL is tightly coupled to the algorithm, to the specific sorting algorithm. Now, how can I decouple it? I would want to be able to use complex algorithm IMPL with bubble sort or quick sort or whatever thing that I would want to use it with. How can I do that? What we do typically is we would create an interface. What we are doing in here is we are creating an interface called sort algorithm. We are saying the sort algorithm interface contains one method which is sort. Now there can be multiple implementations of the sort algorithm, right? So the quick sort algorithm, the bubble sort algorithm and other sort algorithms. What we are doing is we are making the complex algorithm IMPL use this sort algorithm. Don't worry about the add component, add auto add in there. Those are not really important for now. The important thing is complex algorithm IMPL is now making use of the sort algorithm. Let's say in the complex algorithm IMPL, I'm creating a constructor accepting sort algorithm as an input. So I have a constructor similar to this, just like the to-do business IMPL is accepting to-do data service as the input, I would have a similar constructor in the complex algorithm IMPL, which is accepting sort algorithm as an input. What would I be able to do then? Whichever class wants to make use of the complex algorithm IMPL, what it can do is write code like this. What it can do is say, I would want to do a complex algorithm and I would want to use quick sort. Some other place, you might be able to use the complex algorithm by using a bubble sort, radix sort, heap sort. Now, look at it from the perspective of the complex algorithm IMPL. The complex algorithm IMPL needed to use the bubble sort algorithm, needed to use a sort algorithm. What it was doing earlier, the complex algorithm IMPL is taking the responsibility on its own the complex algorithm was saying, I will choose which algorithm to use. I'll hard code it. Now, what is happening in the second implementation, in the loosely coupled implementation? The user of the complex algorithm IMPL is saying, I'll use the complex algorithm IMPL with 
this specific algorithm. You can see how there is an inversion in terms of responsibilities. The complex algorithm IMPL is no longer responsible for choosing this specific algorithm. What it's saying is give me whatever algorithm you would want and I will work with it. The complex algorithm IMPL is decoupled from which sorting algorithm it needs to work on. The complex algorithm IMPL is saying whichever algorithm you give me, I'll work with it. This is what is called dependency inversion. The complex algorithm IMPL is saying I don't need to worry about the sorting algorithm. Whichever sorting algorithm you give me, I'll be able to work with it. So you take the responsibility of providing which sort algorithm to use. Instead of me deciding, instead of I choosing an algorithm, you tell me what to use. And that is what is called dependency inversion. Dependency inversion is a concept in which all the classes explicitly state their dependencies and kind of create interfaces or abstract classes around them so that they can work with any implementation of that interface or they can work with any implementation of that specific abstract class. What we would have through dependency inversion is something called loose coupling. I'd be saying, I don't worry about which dependency you give me. As long as you satisfy this interface, I'll be happy to work with it. Now, what is the advantage of having that kind of code? That's where Spring Framework comes into picture with dependency injection. What Spring Framework says is you take the complex algorithm IMPL and put an at component tag on it. You take the sort algorithm and put at auto wired tag on it. And in addition, you create the implementations of the sort algorithm and you can put specific tags on which one you would want to make use of. So let's say you would want to make use of the quick sort algorithm. Just put at component tag on it. And then what the Spring Framework does, it creates an instance of the quick sort algorithm and puts it into a instance of the complex algorithm IMPL. So Spring Framework essentially does what code you are seeing in here. Spring Framework says, I will create an instance of the quick sort algorithm. I will create an instance of the complex algorithm IMPL using that instance of the quick sort algorithm. This process where Spring Framework identifies the beans, identifies the dependencies and populates the dependencies into the beans is called dependency injection. So in this video, we talked about two important things, dependency inversion and dependency injection. Dependency inversion is very, very important because that's where what we are doing is we are creating an interface or we are creating an abstract class and we are explicitly declaring a dependency. And once we explicitly declare a dependency like the sort algorithm, what happens is we can use a framework like Spring to auto wire the beans and their dependencies. And this concept is called dependency injection. A lot of people think that Spring is the only framework which helps us to do dependency injection. To be actually, there were frameworks well before Spring which had the dependency injection framework. It was just that Spring got the implementation of dependency injection absolutely right and it got the modularity of the Spring framework absolutely right. That's the reason why Spring was very, very successful. In this video, we talked about dependency injection. Dependency injection is one of the core features of the Spring framework. We talked about two important concepts, dependency inversion or loose coupling, and then we talked about dependency injection. Dependency inversion is what enables dependency injection. Each class should explicitly state its dependencies and provide a way you can inject the dependencies in. This is called dependency inversion, where instead of you going and saying, I'm, I'm going to use this version of dependency, you're going to tell, I don't care which dependency you give it to me, I'll work with it. And dependency injection is the process where you would identify what are the different beans, what are the different classes you have to create instances of, what are their dependencies, and you map the classes, the beans with their dependencies. In Spring, we achieve dependency injection through a few annotations like at auto wired, at component, at service, and 
at component scan in 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like udemy safari online and pact we have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months the question is what do you want to learn next we are building solutions to help programmers at all levels you can learn programming with our awesome courses on java python and javascript you can learn full stack development with rest apis and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like spring boot node.js react angular and spring cloud we have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect we have videos to help you learn frameworks industry trends including things like microservices learn the best practices in architecture design and code quality thanks for watching keep learning in 28 minutes